Good evening, I'm AJ Legale. Thanks for joining us for the Cancer Con, an 8 News special report. Martha Nicholas was the most prominent name in the local fight against cancer. But since 2011, when we first exposed that she was faking the illness, she's had a major fall from grace and is now a convicted felon. From hero to hated, from inspiration... You inspire me to never give up. ...to hoax. The story of Martha Nicholas's cancer con is in the words of her judge. I gotta say, this is probably the most unusual case that I've ever encountered. It's a case we began investigating during the spring of 2011 after receiving a tip that Martha Nicholas was faking cancer. I am a three-time survivor and a current fighter. Hanover Sheriff's Department was tipped off at about the same time. Cancer's trying to steal me. This is Nicholas speaking at a Relay for Life event in July of 2011. My diagnosis is terminal. Her story... I am still here. Yeah! was serving as an inspiration to thousands. Martha, you are my hero. Benefits were thrown to raise money for her medical bills. It's been just really heartwarming. Hundreds turned out for the vigil, candles for Martha. Each night, I wonder if it will be the last. There is no arguing Nicholas was legitimately raising money to fight cancer. There was money raised for our organization. There were volunteer hours put in for our organization. But there were also funds going directly in to Martha's pocket. In this 2011 search warrant, a Hanover detective claims Nicholas was collecting donations based on a medical condition that she did not have. When detectives tried to question her in April, they were denied access because of her alleged illness. Three months later, here's Nicholas leading that Relay for Life event. I'm so glad to see all of you with your orange t-shirts here to support Martha. She was selling Cancer Sucks t-shirts and Believe in Miracles necklaces and was claiming to have already beaten cancer three times. I was 22 years old when I was diagnosed with stage four ovarian cancer. As part of our investigation, we questioned her about her fundraising. We have these Cancer Sucks t-shirts and we're asking for $20 for the t-shirts, but whatever you can give, we take. Open-hearted supporters were quick to scoop them up. So instead of us ordering new softball shirts, we decided we'd go ahead and order these. This life that I've lived may seem surreal to so many people. It was shortly after this fundraiser that our investigation would make a surreal discovery. During her countless interviews and public appearances, Nicholas claimed she was being treated at VCU's Massey Cancer Center. Every hour, every day, every week, and every month of that chemotherapy. When Hanover detectives questioned her about whether she in fact had cancer, she provided this letter as medical documentation. It appears to be from a Dr. McCarty at VCU. The letter states Nicholas was being treated for blast phase acute myelogenous leukemia. Basically that she was on death's door. We proved that was a lie with a simple phone call. We um, do not have a patient in our system by the name of Martha Nicholas that goes by the birth date October 1969 and that's for uh, VCU health system as a whole. The letter was faked as detectives and prosecutors would later prove. Dr. McCarty, if he'd come to testify, would testify that he never had seen the defendant in his life, he never treated her for any cancer, he did not write this letter. Meanwhile, Nicholas's story of repeated triumph over cancer was gaining a lot of attention. In this report in The Examiner, Nicholas discusses traveling the country, sharing her story of survival nationwide. Here at home, the community looking for a way to help this person who seemed such an inspiration of hope and strength began showering gifts and donations on her family. In February of 2011, Nicholas began telling people she had been diagnosed with leukemia and had just months to live. Each night, I wonder if it will be the last. I may not ever see my son play baseball again. After the break, watch as Nicholas's carefully constructed lie begins to unravel. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Cancer Con. After faking cancer for years, Martha Nicholas's story is about to be exposed as just that, a story. Cancer's trying to steal me. It's a story Martha Nicholas had been telling for years, and telling well, but it was a story about to take a surprise twist. 
On December 8, 2011, Nicholas was taken into custody and hit with a pair of misdemeanor fraud charges. By this point, our investigation had found additional victims not related to those initial charges. Among them, Frank's apothecary and bodywork in Ashland. It's just, it's unbelievable situation. Out of the kindness of their hearts, the shopkeepers have been giving Nicholas free herbal supplements. Burdock for blood cleansing. To help her body battle the side effects of what's now known to be her fake illness. How much do you think all this cost you? Uh, about $200, $300. In January of 2012, Nicholas quickly pled guilty to the misdemeanor charges as part of a plea deal that called for no active jail sentence. She now understands that she really was not physically ill. Her attorney then, for the first time, publicly stated Martha was dealing with a mental and not physical illness. It's a serious psychiatric condition. But that guilty plea and claim of mental illness would not be the end of Martha's bizarre story. Our reports had already shown her cancer con had swindled more people and for more money than those two misdemeanors accounted for. In June of 2012, Nicholas was arrested once again. This time on five felonies, including two counts of obtaining money by false pretenses. One charge was for those Cancer Sucks t-shirts we'd found her selling. We're asking for $20 for the t-shirts, but whatever you can give, we take. These checks show she took nearly $4,800 from the sale of the shirts. She was also charged for defrauding Frank's apothecary. I think there needs to be some kind of penalty. At the time, the Franks had recently received a card from Nicholas in which she asks their apology. She writes in part, I took all the supplements you gave me believing that my body was indeed battling leukemia. She also wrote that what she really had was severe depression and her broken heart led to a broken mind, and the mind is a powerful thing. But it wasn't just well-meaning supporters Nicholas had been tricking into donations. She was also hit with two charges of Medicaid fraud for defrauding taxpayers. These records prove Martha signed her family up and received nearly 22 grand in Medicaid payments and another $6,985 in SNAP benefits, aka food stamps, all at the same time that this pay stub shows Nicholas's husband was making $112,000 a year. The Medicaid was specifically a her saying basically that the family was destitute and could not afford basic needs such as food, health care. At the same time the husband was making making over 100 grand. grand a year and had health insurance. Do you plead guilty, not guilty, or no contest? Nicholas entered no contest pleas to one count of welfare fraud and one count of obtaining money by false pretenses in January of this year. I find there is substantial evidence upon which to find you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. But it was at this April sentencing we learned what had been taking place behind the scenes. Her skin all over her body was yellow, jaundiced, colored. Martha's family and friends say they never questioned her story because she looked so sick. She was in a physical condition to me that, that mirrored what I would think of someone that was very close to dying. On November 11, 2011, Steve Nicholas says his wife was rushed to Memorial Regional Hospital. A DNR, do not resuscitate order, was in place. There was no question in my mind that my wife was dying. It was at this point, a Hanover County detective who didn't believe Nicholas actually had cancer stepped in and called Steve with a desperate request. Asked me to simply tear up the DNR and let the doctors treat her. Steve says that call saved his wife's life. Running a barrage of tests, doctors quickly learned that Martha did not have leukemia or any other form of cancer. Here's what Martha's psychiatrist claims she has. My original diagnosis this was post-traumatic stress disorder, but I also am treating her for depression and anxiety. Forced to face reality, Nicholas began to quickly recover from her physical symptoms. But still facing up to 40 years behind bars, she only had three words to say in court. Any statement you want to make or anything else that you would like to offer? No, thank you. In the end, the judge decided there was no point in making a public example out of a mentally ill woman. She received only a 10-year suspended sentence. But the Commonwealth was a little bit disappointed. We wanted some period of incarceration. Nicholas's husband offered this to reporters as he walked out of court. I thought that any of this was calculated. Each night, I wonder if it will be the last. If any of this was, was you know, in her right mind. My diagnosis is terminal. Then I wouldn't be here, I, I, you know. My kids and I would be somewhere else because that would be evil, and she's not an evil woman. She's just a woman that got lost in her mind. I am still here. Yeah. 
The Nicholas family has repaid all the money that Martha took. Well, some in the community have forgiven her. Others tell me she made a mockery of a disease that's claimed countless lives and she should have been punished much more severely for her cancer con. Now this story was the result of a viewer tip. If you have a story you'd like me to look into, you can always email me. That email address ajinvestigates at wric.com. Thank you for joining us tonight for the cancer con. Have a good evening.